So like the title of the video says, we're going to be covering Balefire. I'm going to try to move a little bit quickly. Um, it's getting late where I am right now. So let's try to get through this. I am going to be as complete as possible, like always. So let's go ahead and jump into Balefire. This is her number one ability. Now if we go and look at the ability section of this, it's not going to give us a lot of information on Balefire. So when we equip Balefire, it's going to cost 50 energy, or shields in Hildren's case. It's also going to cost 100 shields per shot. Now you'll notice I do have a couple mods on. Um, these are for testing mainly. Um, we have damage of 500 base. Notice that is scaled up to almost 1200 right now. And our explosion radius is 3. So it has a somewhat small AoE radius. Now if I come over to our upgrade section here, we're going to see that we have Blind Rage, we have Umbral Intensify, and we have Fleeting Expertise. We can remove that, that doesn't matter. Um, so what we see here is that we have a bunch of strength. We also have Growing Power, so when we proc that, Balefire will be stronger. Now, one of the interesting things about Balefire is that it will snapshot. So if you have Growing Power or energy conversion, for instance, you will be able to proc both of those and then equip Balefire and it will maintain whatever strength you had when that occurred. So just keep in mind, if you want to kind of play around those procs, you can do that. Now, growing power is a little bit easier because it's part of our aura. Um, but keep in mind, corrosive projection is pretty decent on the Balefire even if you are using a corrosive setup just because it has a low status chance. And we're going to also get into one of our other abilities. I'm going to try to go as little in, in detail as possible for that because that's not part of this video. It just has to do with stripping armor. So let's go ahead and jump into our comparison. So what I'm going to be doing is uh, I'm, we're going to take a look at the Balefire. We're going to take a look at look at one of my setups for the Balefire, and then we're going to compare it to the Staticore. I've seen a lot of people compare this weapon to the Staticore, and it makes sense. It has a lower fire rate, but it is a charge weapon that has an AoE. It fires in a similar way. Um, it is, they both start off as elemental types, so it's a pretty apples to apples comparison. So let's go ahead and jump into Balefire. Perfect accuracy right off the bat. Charge rate is very slow. Um, it's very slow. Charge rate on the static core, for instance, is one. So it only takes one second to reach the max. An additional note is on Balefire, if you are up in the air with Aegis Storm, and I'm sorry to keep jumping to other skills, but if you're in the air with Aegis Storm, you will actually pull out two Balefires. This doesn't actually matter. It doesn't increase your fire rate. It doesn't increase your AoE. It doesn't increase anything. Keep that in mind. It looks cooler. doesn't actually do anything. Um, crit chance, we have 5% here. The static core, I believe, has 14% base status chance. The crit multiplier is 1.5 times. So we see that crit chance and crit multiplier are pretty bad here. Um, and we're going to go into something in a second that's going to allow us to scale the Balefire a little bit. Um, but we see that the crit multiplier is really low, even if we can get our status or our chance up. Um, the static core, I believe, is a 2.2 times multiplier, so it is much higher. The static core is also a 3.5 fire rate, whereas this weapon is a 0.833. So it's not looking great for the bale fire so far. However, we're going to come into some kind of good things here. We have a reload speed of one second. Now the bale fire charger is a little weird. It says it has a reload. It does not. I have. I've done quite a bit of testing and I also looked online to make sure I was correct and this thing doesn't ever seem to reload. You are completely governed by fire rate or charge rate. You are not governed by reload. There is an infinite magazine. Um, our status chance is 10%. Now this is much lower than the static war so we're not going to be able to proc corrosives all the time. We're not going to be able to proc gas all the time. So this is not going to be a status weapon. Um, hopefully in the future they'll add an augment that interacts in some way with this, but for right now it doesn't do it. Now, we're going to look at the electricity amount here. Now this would be 500 base. 
So just keep in mind that would be 500 base. This is 1195. That comes from our ability strength. Now, if we come over here to the Staticore and just take a peek at its stats real quick, you're going to see that its uh, its base damage is going to be about 560 to 1000, and our explosion, which scales up to eight meters, so it is a much larger, two and a half times larger AOE for the Staticore over the bale fire but our base damage is going to be 1100 radiation and then 2000 corrosive however that is with a bunch of mods on if we went to a zero config over here we would have 44 base radiation and our explosion would do 88 damage that is much lower that's a tenth and that's i don't know a seventh or something a sixth even um so what we're going to do is we're going to come over here um, these are the mods we're using damage damage multi shot multi shot element element create creating corrosive and then we use prime target cracker and we are going to be using the arcane avenger so this thing when we unpause the ai for these guys is going to be proccing 30 percent flat crit and that is going to allow both of these weapons to crit with a little bit more consistency so i kind of wanted to show that because this is a way you can scale the bale fire even though it's sort of not intended because its crit is so bad um, so let's go ahead and take a look at what the bale fire ends up with in a general build now keep in mind I can throw anemic agility on this. That's going to really help our fire rate. I'll go ahead and demonstrate. Um, this is our full fire rate, which isn't nearly as fast as the static is going to be. And this is without anemic agility, by the way. However, I'm not able to currently fit anemic agility on my static core because I use a different setup for it. Um, and I'm not going to waste forma just for the purpose of throwing anemic agility on. Um, so just keep in mind, I am removing the Balefire's anemic agility to keep this test apples to apples. So these these guns both have the same mods on them right now. Um, the static core could probably use a little bit more status chance. Um, I could probably throw a 60-60 mod on and it would maybe be a little bit better for corrosive procs specifically. But in a general setting, um, these are going to be very, very close comparisons. Now notice our, our ending damage is 51, almost 52,000. So even though our crit's super bad and our status is super bad and... Our fire rate super bad. Our base damage is really high. It's way bigger. It's way, way, way bigger than the other one. So we, so when they made this weapon, it's actually kind of good that they kind of governed that crit and status because this thing would be insane if it had like 30% crit chance and a two times crit multiplier. It would be insanely good. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, jump out there. Um, keep in mind we are running quite a bit of strength right now and this is pretty doable to be honest with you we can fit a lot of defense over here so this these three are pretty doable in most Hildren builds so just keep that in mind we use arcane aegis to fuel our additional bale fire shots um, I don't want to go too far into aegises or the other abilities um, but one thing I did want to note with the other abilities before we get started is we do have Pillage. And Pillage will actually steal a percentage of enemy shields um, and armor. Now, we because of the way we've scaled this, we have a lot of strength. We're actually going to sap away with one pulse 60% of an enemy's armor. Now, in order to sort of show this, I want to show, because we have nerfed our duration a bit, uh, when I use this, it's not going to go very far. So if you can see that, hopefully you can see that. Let me let me change my energy color real quick. I'm sorry I'm sorry to de derail this, but I think it's kind of important. Um, let's, let's go with like a white real quick. Um, I think these are the colors I need to change. So notice that's about as far as they go. So when we're when we're close range, when we're fight, kind of fighting enemies very very close, which actually that isn't even that close. Yeah, see that's a very respectable range. We're going to be stripping 60% of their armor per um, shot of this. So just keep in mind it is very very strong um, armor stripping. 
So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be shooting these guys with the static core. I'm going to shoot a couple of them. I'm going to switch to the Balefire. You're probably going to notice we're going to have a Balefire glitch. I don't know why, but sometimes when you shoot enemies in the simulacrum with the Balefire, they just eject into like the atmosphere. Um, so let's go ahead and uh, shoot these guys with the static core. I'm going to aim for the head. I'm going to try to keep this as consistent as possible. Keep me honest if you guys see any cons inconsistencies. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this guy. We're going to see that I'm dealing um, radiation and corrosive because that's the way the static core works. And we're going to hit this guy a couple times and we're just going to kind of get a feel for the damage output. Keep in mind, I am firing slowly. This thing fires much, much, much faster than your um, Balefire will. Um, so let's go ahead and hit him again. And it didn't feel too, too bad. And what I'm going to do with this guy, he has probably a couple Corrosive procs on him. So I'm going to go ahead and just do a charge shot. And we're going to kind of see the AoE power of the Static Core. So we hit quite a few enemies back there. Um, and it did quite a bit more damage as well. Now, when we get to the Balefire comparison, I'm, I'm going to show something that's kind of kind of terrible about Balefire itself. So when we go to Balefire, um, firing these shots off, we can charge them as well. It takes a long time to charge. If you look at the top right, um, keep in mind our efficiency is pretty close to 100, um, so it should be a little less than 100. However, because of the nature of charged weapons, I'm never going to be able to fire it frame perfectly and just consume 100 energy. So you're going to see some varying numbers there. However, if I tap it, you're going to see something pretty close to 100. Um, so we lost, I'm not even 100% sure. Oh, we have a little bit of overshield. Let me get past that. So 4,095 should be the amount. Right. So let's go ahead and use it. And we're at 86. Pretty close. Pretty close. If I fully charge this thing, you're going to see we lose a lot more than 200 energy or 200 shields we lose almost 400 so keep in mind when you fully charge this thing it takes up four times the resources that your normal shot would be if you're just spamming it now the sad part about that is if we're spamming the shot it's dealing about 100 percent damage if we fully charge it 200 percent so it's actually going to be better dps with balefire to rapidly fire it and it's going to be better on energy conservation, on shield conservation. So just keep both of those things in mind as we fire these. So I'm going to go ahead and get through the rest of the enemies with the static core. And from here on, I'm going to kind of blow through it as fast as possible. I'm going to do maximum fire rate and we're just going to go. Oh, <laughs> and I had to reload. All right. So we see that we, we're getting through these guys pretty quickly, pretty quickly. And I'm trying to go for headshots the whole way. I know you're not going to be able to do that in a real environment all the time, but I mean, notice we had to reload there. That is one of the weaknesses of the uh, static core with the Balefire is the Balefire will never have to reload. Um, so let's go ahead and equip the Balefire and we're going to Yep, that's correct. And then we're going to shoot the first couple kind of slowly, and then we're going to go as fast as possible for the last few. So let's go ahead and go for headshots, and we see that we deal very respectable damage, very um, comparable to the static core. And the reason why I br keep bringing up the static core is it's just what what this weapon gets compared to. It just it does. Um, so we can see that it's pretty good, and then we're going to fire as fast as possible for the last few. missed my bad so we see that this thing if you actually mod for it in ability strength is going to end up being at least as strong as the static core however um we're gonna try out a couple more tests and i'm, I'm sorry to kind of oh i should have unpaused their ai because what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna look at arcane avenger and how it interacts and this is going to be simulating as if the static core had a little bit of crit on it um, versus the balefire which has a little bit of crit on it so let's go ahead and get our procs off first. Hopefully, there we go. And we're going to fire as fast as possible. And we're just going to see how quickly we can kind of tear through these guys. Lots and lots of crits here. Lots of crits. 
So 40, I think it's about 45% crit chance. And uh, here we go. Notice our crits are pretty big. We do have a pretty crit, big crit multiplier on this weapon, at least higher than average. So we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're gonna do it with the Balefire this time. I'm gonna fly just for some style points. Um, so this doesn't actually increase my damage at all. Um, keep that in mind. It's just going to give me a little bit better vantage point. In fact, I'm sorry about that. I shouldn't do that just in case, you know, I'm not doing any witchcraft. I'm going to turn that off. Um, so I'll, I'll even uh, unequip uh, Balefire and re-equip it. So let's go ahead and do this again. And we're going to shoot some enemies. And we're seeing when we crit, we're dealing quite a bit of damage. And that's mainly because this weapon just has such, such high base damage. Um, you'll also notice sometimes we're getting like crazy physics that occur. I'm not sure why this weapon does this in the simulator. I don't really see it out in the, out in the wild too much. But yeah, th these things are very, very comparable. Um, I think the static core is going to be a more broad, a more widely ranged ability um, to like adapt because it has status chance. It can do crit. It's not it's not incredibly governed by any of its specific stats. It also has a very large AOE. The Balefire is pretty strong. Um, I wouldn't say that it needs an outright um, buff. What I would say is I would like to see it to where maybe lower its fire rate a little bit. Um, maybe remove its, maybe remove its uh, status chance and just give it some crit. Just give it some crit, or possibly add an augment um, that gives it a bunch of status chance or a bunch of crit or interacts in some way. Um, there's a lot of different ways you could do it, but I think an augment could very much kind of put Balefire on the map as a really good exalted weapon, because this thing already is pretty good. It's already pretty good. And if I, I'll, I'll go ahead and do a charge shot just in conclusion real quick. Um, actually, I shouldn't say in conclusion. So over half his health and damage. It's it's very very strong when you charge it up. Um, twice as strong, in fact. But what I'm going to do now is um, this is sort of the, one of the reasons too why, especially on Hildren, because it's her her exalted weapon and not just some random characters. I do also have access to pillage. So if I pillage these enemies, I steal a lot of their armor. Oops, I missed. Yeah, it's it's just what he's like lagging or something. I'm not I don't know what his problem is, but let me go ahead and get this guy. What is going on? All right. Well, the game kind of has decided to, you know, in the video for me, I think. But uh, just keep in mind with Haven, you're going to be able to like strip a lot of armor very, very quickly and then just, you know, one shot these guys. Um Interestingly, you can um, you can actually steal while you're charging it up. Um, I still don't condone charging it up. I think it's much better to spam it. However, um, when you're out in the wild, especially even if you have lower duration, it's going to allow you to proc it and then start firing. And these enemies are going to take a lot, lot more damage. So, um, Balefire on its own, kind of not great. If you throw in an Arcane Avenger, it gets a little bit better. If you throw in pillage to steal armor, it gets a little bit better. If you if you kind of combine some of the other tips and tricks that you have in Warframe, the weapon really comes alive and it's very strong. Keep in mind, guys, these are level 125s with a lot of armor. A lot of armor and we're really not even procking corrosive on them. So when you're fighting like level 50, 60 stuff, it's going to annihilate them. If you're in arbitrations, it's going to do very well. Keep that in mind, guys. Even at the very tippy top of balance and Warframe, it's still going to be just below all the other stuff that would be OP. So I think that's going to conclude it for this episode. Thanks for watching, guys.